Hey okay, guys, thanks for tuning in to Overdrive. I'm on my own this time around, so I have to get used to talking to myself. Uh, the reason being that I was hoping to put, put together a series of videos, uh, information videos and how-to videos, uh, in addition to our, our car reviews that we normally do with the car owners. It's my thoughts that the more you know about your car, the better. Uh, it certainly comes in handy. I know climbing in under the car and getting grease on your fingernails isn't for everybody. Um, but even if you do take your car along to, to a mechanic you trust, it's always a good idea to, to know what they're talking about. So if they tell you you, you, know, you need a water pump replaced, you're going to be able to look where your water pump was and see that they put a brand new shiny one in for you. So I'd certainly encourage anyone and everyone to, to get to know their car a little better. Um, today I'll run through the cooling system. So the cooling system is just, just so, so important on cars these days, especially the modern ones. The older cars probably get away with overheating them on occasion. They're the cast iron blocks, but with these new alloy engines, if you overheat your car, you're going to do some serious damage. And we've all seen cars on the side of the road, traveling up the highway, bonnets open, steam and smoke is bellowing out, and they've overheated their car, and they've most likely done some, some very expensive damage. You know, if you've got an oil leak somewhere, you'll make a bit of mess on your driveway. You can get away with that for a period of time, just topping it up. But if you've got a significant coolant leak and one of the components isn't working properly, you're going to do some real damage real fast and it can get very expensive. The best case scenario, you're talking about a uh, head gasket. The gasket itself is cheap, but it's a day's labour. Um, if you crack an engine block or an engine head, then you're up for some serious money. So you need to pay attention to your coolant system. Um, what I'm going to go through today is the different components that make up the cooling system, and what can potentially go wrong with them, and how you might, as a driver, recognise that you've got a problem. Okay everyone, let's take a closer look at the various components that make up a, a cooling system. I'll try and keep a steady hand so you can get a good look at them. Uh, let's start up at the coolant tank here, or reservoir. Um, so you've all probably seen that under your bonnet, there's a min and max there that you should be checking to make sure your coolant is in the right or at the right level. Normally you'd have uh, green or pink coolant in there. I've got plain water in there because I'm in the middle of a flush. Then you've got hoses feeding out of that tank. So one there feeding into the radiator, which you can see at the front here. And I've removed the fans, which we'll take a quick look at as well. There's your radiator in the front so that air can pass through it and cool things down. And then going in and out of that radiator, you've got a, a lower here hose here, which comes out, feeds into your water pump. A bit hard to get a good look at the water pump, but uh, that's the pulley on it, being driven by the, the serpentine belt. So within that water pump is a propeller, a mechanical propeller. So as you turn the, or as the engine's on, it'll turn that belt, it'll turn your water pump, and that will push the coolant through the engine uh, via a series of coolant galleries or, or channels. Um, as things heat up, it'll make its way to the top here. Uh, there's a thermostat, well that's a thermostat housing, there's a thermostat in there. Now that opens and closes depending on the pressure in the system. So if you think back to you know, your high school chemistry, if you pressurise a system, you raise the boiling point. Um, if you add particles to the system, like the coolant does, you also raise the, the boiling point. Um, so by doing that we keep things cool and we stop them from, from overheating and boiling. Uh, so once it reaches a certain pressure, the thermostat will open and come out into the upper radiator hose feed back into the radiator, cool down as it passes through, back out of the lower hose and back into the water pump and the cycle repeats. Now the fans are taken out so we could have had a better look. So here are the hands, you've got a twin set up here. Um, electric motors on these so they're not belt driven. Most cars these days do have electric motors on their fans. 
some of the commercial cars, the diesels and the vans and the, and the work trucks and that still have a fan driven system or belt driven system. But uh, most cars are getting around with electric ones at the moment. I will mention as well, because this is considered a part of the cooling system, even though you may not think it, the heater, the cabin heater, um, also uses coolant to, to heat the cabin. So what that does is coolant or hot coolant comes out of the engine block into the cabin and essentially there's a mini radiator inside and a blower fan and that fan blows the air over the coolant and that heats it up so you're getting hot air blown into, into your cabin. Comes back out, back into the engine and back through to the thermostat housing to repeat the loop. Alright, so let's talk about what can potentially go wrong. Um, firstly, I'll mention your temperature gauge on your instrument cluster um, that you see every time you drive, pay attention to it. Um, typically your car should really be able to control its temperature between a, a pretty narrow range. Um, so if you see that it's creeping up or if it's fluctuating, the needle's fluctuating uh, more than it should be or more quickly than it should be, um, you've likely got a problem and you do need to go take it into to a mechanic to have a look at things. Um, so firstly let's talk about coolant. So the first thing many of you are going to think about when it comes to issues with your cooling system is, is a leak. So if you've got any green stuff or pink stuff uh, on the floor of your garage and you're noticing it after you've reversed out, you need to take a look at it or get someone to do that for you. Uh, leaks can come from just about anywhere in the system. So they can be because of a bad hose. So I've got a hose here, which is a brand newy, but um, hoses can deteriorate over time from the heat especially um, and they can either get a crack in them in which case you're likely to lose a lot of coolant quickly or sometimes the, the clamp the seal into the radiator into the water pump or the thermostat housing for that matter um, can be bad and coolant can seep out of there so that might be a slower leak uh, a fairly easy fix. Your radiator could be bad um, so you could have a crack in the radiator, either in the, the tanks in the side or corrosion in the aluminium core and coolant can be leaking out that way. The coolant could be leaking out of the water pump, typically the seals that made up to the engine. Uh, you can get leaks from the thermostat housing, you can get leaks from the um, surge tank in this car, the overflow tank in other cars as well. So. A leak is a sign that something needs to be done. So obviously also if your level is dropping in that tank that you're checking, uh, you need to get it looked at. Just quickly, I did forget to mention if the cool level is dropping and you can't see any visible leak anywhere, uh, particularly if it's dropping quite quickly, it's possible you might have an internal leak somewhere um, within the engine. And that's a problem you're really going to have to refer to, to the mechanic. So I'll do a pressure test and figure out exactly where it's coming from and what needs to be done. Uh, next, let's focus on the radiator. So the radiator has a very important function, and that's to cool things down as the coolant passes through it. Um, it does that with assistance from all well, the breeze as you're driving, but also the fans. So your radiator, it does tend to get clogged up over time. Um, and if that's happening, you're likely to see your car gradually warming up. So the system is trying to keep up, um, but it can't because that radiator is not cooling as efficiently as it normally does. We already touched on the deterioration in the radiator that may cause leaks. Um, but often these, these days, you know, if your radiator's got a problem, you're best off just getting it replaced. It's not a huge job, and you can normally get aftermarket radiators at a reasonable price. So you're best off getting that done. The fans, so I mentioned that normally they're electric these days rather than belt driven. If they're belt driven you need to be keeping an eye on the belt itself to make sure it's in good nick. Uh, if they're electric well then they're either going to be working or they're not. So the fans typically kick in when it reaches a certain temperature. So you'll hear the fans kicking in and out, you've probably all heard, heard the fan noise, they're quite noisy. Uh, so your car will get to a certain temperature, the fans will kick in cool things down, they'll switch off again. Um, so if you're not hearing that at all, if the car's warming up, the fans aren't kicking in, uh, there's a problem there. So it could be the, the fan, the motor or the electrical connection 
something you need to get looked at again. Um, the fans will also typically kick in on it when the air con's engaged, that's because that's putting extra load on the engine, so the fans will kick in just to, to cool things down, um, and also as part of the, the air conditioning setup. Next, let's touch on the, the water pump. So we've, we've described what the water pump does. Um, most water pumps are still, still belt driven. You can get electric water pumps. I don't have any personal experience with those, but most are belt driven. So you're gonna have to keep an eye on that serpentine belt. Got a prop here, this is actually off my right arm mower. But uh, you need to make sure your belt's in reasonable condition. The one in this particular car probably needs replacing. Uh, so if there's significant cracks in it, uh, if it's thinning out like it is there, or if there's any frayed bits, you know, warning bells are going off, you need to get it replaced. Uh, this is a very important part of your car. You know, it's relatively cheap and inexpensive, but it does a lot of things. It's not just the water pump, it powers your, your alternator, your aircon compressor, um, your power steering pump if it's not electric. So it is a very important part and sometimes overlooked. A couple components left to, to touch on. Uh, the thermostat, as I mentioned, I don't have one here to show you. I've recently changed the one out of this car, so you'll have to use your imagination a little bit. But um, it's got a spring and a, or a mushroom type washer. Uh, when the system, I mentioned, hits a certain pressure, then things will open up and the coolant can flow. So the, the job of the, the thermostat is twofold. One is to let your, warm, your car warm up initially um, before it opens, so it leaves the coolant in the engine for a little while to, to warm up to optimum operating temperature. Um, and then it heats an upper threshold, it opens, and then allows the coolant to circulate to maintain that optimum operating temperature. So the, the issue with the thermostat typically is it becomes stuck shut. Um, when that happens, things are gonna overheat because the coolant can't flow through. Sometimes it's opening up late, um, so what happens is the car will get hotter than it usually does, but then it'll open, coolant will flow and it'll cool back down again, but it's still going out of the range that where you typically want it, um, and that's a problem. Some people, you know, if they're going out back in Australia, they'll, uh, they'll just take it out, because uh, they don't want to worry about a, a thermostat failing. So the car's not going to heat up as quickly as it should, it's not going to overheat because of your thermostat either, so they'll just uh, flip it out and, and leave, it on, leave it out of the car. Uh, radiator cap, I did have one here to show you. So similarly, there is a spring in there. Uh, it's pressurised. This car doesn't have a radiator cap because it has a surge tank set up, but a lot of cars still do, and you'll probably see that. There's always warnings to not open them when the car is hot. That's because the system's pressurised, the corn's hot, and if you open it, it's all going to come spurting out and you can end up scolding yourself. Uh, so the, the purpose of this is to, to pressurise the system up to an extent. Uh, when it gets too hot then, or too pressurised, the coolant is allowed to flow into the overflow tank. Uh, and then when things cool down a little bit, it'll draw back the coolant from the overflow tank, back into the system. So check on that. It should have a nice seal here. Nice rubber steel to be doing its job. I think we've covered, we've covered most of the key components. The other thing, the heater I touched on, so there's two hoses there. Again, you need to keep an eye on. Uh, the heater core inside the cabin, again, can become blocked and affect the flow of coolant. Um, but that's pretty hard to get to. You're probably going to have to go and take a look, look at that if that ends up being the problem. I hope that's given you a good overview of the cooling system. And once you've, you've learned about a cooling system in one car, it does tend to translate into most others. Um, things are starting to become increasingly made electric rather than belt driven, but aside from that, you're still going to have the, the same key components in an internal combustion engine, at least anyway. Um, we've run through some of the common issues, and again, I'd encourage you to not ignore those. So if you've got any warning signs, uh, cooling on the ground, temperature gauge that's drifting up or fluctuating you know what more wildly than it should be get your car looked at um, the components in a cooling system are typically not that expensive but the damage that can be done to your engine if they're ignored certainly can be so make sure you get things looked at
So we didn't run through, we didn't run through you know, how to, to change any of these components today, but if you are interested, I'd certainly be able to, to help and I could line that up for you. Just uh, flick me a message below um, and I will continue to provide some more information and some how-to videos. Uh, we hope to develop owner drive into to a valuable resource for you guys. Uh, something that offers more than your typical you know, car review YouTube channel. So thanks for your support. Please hit like and subscribe and uh, we'll continue to bring you new material.